So in past videos in this course, we've talked a lot about measuring a set of qubits, but not about what happens when we measure just some of those qubits uh, in, our, in our quantum system. So to name a precise uh, example, consider uh, the case of just two uh, qubits in some quantum state, we'll get to in a second, and imagine that you measure one of them. And what we'd like to know is exactly uh, what the effect of this measurement is. So to make that a little bit more uh, precise, imagine that the quantum state coming in here, the two qubit quantum state, is alpha naught naught uh, plus beta uh, naught one plus gamma one naught plus delta one one. And the sort of questions that we'd like the answers to, uh, what is the probability, if we're doing this computational basis measurement on the first qubit, of getting the outcome zero? Or what is the probability of getting the outcome one? And uh, what are the corresponding posterior states? That is the states after uh, the measurement has been done. So for example, if uh, we get the outcome zero here, we want to know both, well, we want to know what the state of, of the, the joint state of the two qubits is after getting that measurement outcome. And uh, similarly, if we get uh, outcome one, we want to know what the joint state uh, of the two qubits is after getting that uh, measurement outcome. Now, there's a pretty reasonable uh, guess uh, you can make about what, say, probability of zero uh, is. The guess is, uh, well, what, what you imagine uh, is that uh, we weren't just measuring the first qubit, but in fact, imagine that we were measuring both uh, qubits uh, and you, in that case, you would have probabilities for 0, 0 and for 0, 1. And so the guess is that the probability of getting 0, if you measure just the first qubit, is the same as if you'd measured both qubits and then summed over all of the probabilities um, where you got the 0 outcome uh, here on the first qubit. So in particular, this would be equal to the sum of the corresponding amplitudes, so alpha squared plus beta squared. Um, and e there's actually a simple physical argument suggesting that this has to be true. And uh, the way to see that is to imagine that this second qubit was a long, long, long way away. Then if we do a measurement here on this first qubit, the probability of getting uh, the measurement outcome zero can't depend on anything that happens over here. So it doesn't matter whether we leave the second qubit alone or we could imagine that we were actually uh, also measured it in the computational uh, basis. Uh, and so the probability of getting that measurement outcome must be just the same in those two instances. So that's a motivation for making uh, this guess. And in fact, it's the rule uh, that we're going uh, to adopt. So in a similar way, uh, you would uh, guess, and we will adopt the rule, that the probability of getting uh, 1 is equal to uh, what happens when we sum over all the possible probabilities um, for the uh, for a 2 qubit measurement uh, with the uh, uh, where we get a 1 uh, result on the first qubit. So this is equal to uh, gamma squared plus the amplitude delta squared. Okay, all right, so um, that's sort of some motivation. Now I want to state uh, what the general rule is um, for evaluating the probability of measurement outcomes uh, when you just uh, 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 measure part of a quantum system. So we'll imagine that uh, you're measuring part of a quantum system and you're interested in knowing what the probability is of getting a particular measurement outcome m will typically be a bit string on that uh, part of the quantum system. And what we do is I'm going to imagine that the alpha, uh, that we, we're labeling the uh, amplitudes now by uh, an alpha everywhere with a subscript. Um, and we're going to sum over all of those amplitudes squared where we have an M uh, on the appropriate uh, qubits and uh, we sum over everything else. So I'm using the dot uh, notation to indicate a sum over all other uh, possibilities. So this is just a generalization of what we wrote uh, earlier in the two qubit case where we summed 
uh, over all the amplitudes, um, which were uh, you, where we had a zero on the first qubit here, um, because we were interested in the probability of the zero. Uh, I've changed notation, as you'll uh, obviously notice. Here, alpha was just the first uh, amplitude. Here, the alpha uh, with a subscript uh, ranges over all the amplitudes uh, for uh, the system. Okay, so that's the general rule uh, for doing a measurement um, on a multi-qubit system, on just part of a multi-qubit system, and for evaluating the probabilities. Now we also want to know about the posterior states. So let's go back uh, to the two-qubit uh, case and our uh, state uh, alpha 0, 0, plus beta 0, 1, uh, plus gamma 1, 0, plus delta 1, 1, and ask uh, what happens when we do a, a measurement in the computational basis on the first qubit. Well, what we do is actually pretty simple. We just collect uh, terms. So in particular, uh, uh, we're going to collect terms around the zero state on the comp on the first qubit and around the one state. So if we collect around the zero state, this is naught alpha zero plus beta one on the second qubit plus one times uh, gamma zero plus delta one. So I haven't done anything here except sort of simple algebraic manipulations according to the rules I talked about in an earlier video for manipulating these states. This is, I've just rewritten the state uh, slightly. And all we do to figure out the posterior states is uh, we just, yeah, we, we collect terms. Um, so basically, uh, let, let me write it out explicitly. Um, if we get the measurement outcome zero, then our two qubit uh, state uh, afterwards, uh, after the computational basis uh, measurement, is just a zero on the first qubit, not surprisingly at all, and on the second qubit, it's just this state, alpha zero plus beta one, but it has to be normalized properly, uh, you know, alpha squared plus beta squared is not necessarily equal to one, and so we divide by the square root of alpha squared plus beta squared, so we divide by the length. Um, right, so, so this is now a valid, a properly normalized uh, quantum state, uh, just as, as we want. Um, you might wonder or worry uh, that maybe we'd be dividing by zero, but actually because the probability of getting outcome zero is just, uh, it's, it's alpha squared plus beta squared, um, the only way we'd be dividing by zero is if the probability of this measurement outcome was in fact zero, so it couldn't happen. Uh, and so you know, in practice this is not actually um, a problem. In the same way, the posterior state, if we get measurement outcome uh, one for our two qubit system, well, I'm sure you can guess, here we get state one, and here we get this state uh, gamma zero plus delta one, but again it's normalized by the square root of gamma squared plus delta uh, squared. And so we, these are both uh, valid uh, quantum states. And that's the general rule that we use to uh, do a partial measurement on a uh, two qubit uh, system. You can also, uh, I think, easily see how these results generalize uh, to systems containing larger numbers of qubits. I've already described how the probabilistic rule uh, generalizes, but you can also see how the posterior state uh, rule generalizes in a very similar way um, when we have just a few of the many qubits uh, being measured. I won't go explicitly through any uh, more complicated examples here, uh, but it should be easy uh, enough to get the hang of. All right, so in uh, the next video, uh, what I'm going to do instead is to describe how you do a measurement uh, in an arbitrary basis, not just the computational basis, uh, for part of a quantum uh, system. And uh, this is an easy generalization of what we've done in this video, uh, but it's important because it's the key extra concept that we need uh, to understand quantum teleportation.